Hey train fans, welcome to the Rockwell Canyon podcast. Today's episode, we're going to talk about the USA Trains F3. So now the F3 came out about 20 years ago and has recently been released again as an F7, having a few different details uh, to the side grills and I think probably some of the roof fans as well. Uh, but essentially it's the same shell. And the engine photoed here, of course, is a Boston and Maine F3, which was, I believe, one of the earlier runs. My model has been converted to battery power, has a, a lithium-ion battery on board and an Airwire 900 board, uh, the Jet G2 second generation board, uh, which is a 10 amp capacity board and is able to power a second locomotive from it. The connectors you can see in this image uh, show the power connection for the motors and the red plug and the black plug is for the lighting for the second engine. In looking at the underside, you can see I've removed the sliders, which are used for power pickup. Uh, since I use battery power, they're not necessary. Also, you can see there's no speaker. Now, it certainly is possible to use sound with the Airwire 900 system, uh, but it's not as convenient as Rail Pro or Revolution. And I just assume keep it uh, natural. Another personal modification that I've made is to remove the rubber diaphragm from the end. Uh, this is a neat option they have in these engines, but I just assume I uh, leave those out because they're really long. And when you put the uh, aftermarket couplings on, it kind of shows how oversized they are. So the other element that I have eliminated are the class lights. These are the little LEDs above the number boards uh, that shine green when going forward and red in reverse. Uh, this is kind of a little contrary to how they originally would have worked on a on a you know typical period locomotive uh class lights are actually used for multi multi section trains so the first section would be green lights and then the second section would be red lights for modern operations you're way more likely to see these lights used with a white lamp uh to indicate a special uh and not actually on at all for reverse moves but rather the headlight will be on in a dim condition and that would be the um a proper setup for a reverse move with this type of engine at the end of a train. Okay, so now moving on, we can see the packaging that the F3s come in. There is a B unit available as well. I had the B unit for these Boston and Maine engines for a while, but uh, ended up selling it to a, a gentleman online. I mainly bought them because I like to uh, model the Comic Scenic Railroad, and they have a pair of F7s in this paint scheme. And so it's kind of an homage to that rather than the historic uh, pairing of a and B's that the Boston Maine would have done with their F3s. All right, now let's talk about the motor blocks in these engines. They are the same block that you'll find in the GP9, the GP30, and the GP38. Without a doubt, these are my favorite motor blocks in G-Scale. They're not the prettiest looking things. The wheels are a little small, but boy, they've got great power and great reliability. Even when things go wrong, they just keep going. All right, so now we can see a comparison between the Aristocraft and the USA Trains block. You can see the Aristocraft has a much, much smaller motor, and the USA Trains is a really big motor, but different size wheels, of course. The USA Trains motor block has axle ends that extend into the side frames. They're actually sprung side frames, so your locomotive has some suspension. The Aristocraft, uh, at least in their current setup, have no axle ends, so there is no suspension on those engines. Uh, just a little bit of a rocking action in the truck frame itself. Uh, so for tracking, uh, the USA Trains engines tend to do a, little, do a little bit better for that reason. Opening up the block, you can see we have a really simple setup. It's just a motor with two worm gears driving two helical gears there. Uh, there are brass bushings on the axles uh, that carry um, power pickup in addition to what the axle end, ends pick up as well. And there's also the um, slider and there's this piece of uh, wire that goes across. I like to remove that piece of wire uh, because it makes it a lot easier to get the uh, axle uh, bearings back into their appropriate slots. So the axles are actually half shafts and they're connected by the gear in the middle and one of the problems with this is the plastic gear sometimes will crack. Actually quite often it cracks. Um, there's a fix here. You can take this some of this brass tubing and cut little pieces off and make like a sleeve to go over that. And that'll hold the gear back on the knurling and keep everything in line. The really amazing thing is, even that this uh, gear should split, uh, it still keeps running and running and running. And the only thing you'll notice is it may wobble a little bit. 
um, and really the most damage you'll do is wear out the bushings in the uh, side frames. I can't actually remember ever having one strip out the gears because of this. And one last note, if you ever do open these up to service them, be sure to get these bearings back in their slots all the way. It's quite difficult to that piano wires in there from the pickup system. You may even be uh, wise to remove that and put it back in if you're still using track power, just so that you know that you got those uh, bearings seated right. That way the gears don't grind because they're not all the way in their seats. All right, well, that's about it for my explanation on the F3s. I've had these engines pretty much since they um, came out back in the early 2000s. Uh, the B&M set is newer to me, uh, but I had these main central ones for quite a while on my old layout, and uh, they were a blast to have over there. Uh, so I'm curious to uh, ask you guys, uh, you know, what your favorite um, USA Trains paint scheme is for the F3. So please, down in the comment section, uh, tell us what your favorite paint scheme is for these USA Trains F3s. And if you have a video link, uh, please share it. I'm sure there's plenty of folks who'd like to see it as well. I know I would. And speaking of F3 videos, here's one now from my railroad. Enjoy.
hope you enjoyed that, folks. Uh, today we have a new section on the podcast called the Parlor of Conversation, and uh, it's going to be brief today. But normally we'll discuss something uh, you know unique in the garden routing realm that um, makes you think. So today's topic is something of uh, really model railroad and fundamentals. It's the bold question, what makes you interested in model trains? Now for me, it's uh, something that I've been a part of uh, my life for quite a long time, uh, probably since I was, I don't know, maybe five or six years old when I got my first model train set. And it's something that I've carried on with me all, all my life. And, uh, you know, I think part of it maybe is you see these giant trains and it's something that you could never possibly um, bring to your house and have. You know, you can have cars and you can have, uh, you know, fancy bicycles and, and whatnot, but owning a train is another level. I suppose it's kind of like owning an airplane. You can do it, but it's um, quite an undertaking to get there. So for us to explore the interest in rarity, uh having something like a model is a good way to do it. So if you'd be so kind, uh, I invite you to... Uh, enter in the comment section any stories that you may have of how you came to garden rarity and uh, what your thoughts are on the whole model rarity industry. I'll leave you now with a different variation on my common scenic uh, mountaineer uh, being pulled by my Rockwall Canyon Jeeps and also a Rockwall Canyon F unit. I kind of like the way these look. Alright folks, thanks for watching. My name is Rocky Canyonero and that's how we do trains around here.